Hello, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. We are so glad you joined us today during this digital age. You could have tuned in anywhere else, but you chose PG, and we are incredibly grateful. Here's our pleasant planner for this week.
when we look back over where we've been and where we've come from, we recognize that had it not been for you on our side, where would we be? And Father, we just ask that you would look in upon every household, look in upon everyone under the sound of our voice. And Father, we already know that you've provided all of our needs, but we ask that you would give comfort and peace of mind. Lord, that you would create certainty where there is uncertainty. Father, help us to recognize that you told us that we would cast all of our cares on you, you. that you would take care of us. So, Father, help us to recognize how we have deprived and neglected ourselves for not attending unto thee. Father, we just ask that you would look in upon those that are sick and shut in. Father, those that are confused and perplexed. Father, those that are lonely and feel all alone. Help them to realize that you are still there, that you're still knocking at the door, asking if they would accept you so that you could come in. So, Father, we just say, give us strength, be our spirit, be our conviction. Help us to compel others in our voice as we go forth singing praises unto thee, that somebody might be touched, somebody might hear, and then ask also, what can they do to be saved? And Father, we ask this all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, we are thankful that you are here today. Let us jump into the word of God. But just before we jump into the word of God, we want to consult with God. God, we pause now to tell you thank you. Thank you for who, who you are. God, thank you for what you have done. And God, we thank you for allowing us to see you even during this pandemic place. God, we pray now that uh, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, but it be received in the hearts and the ears of those who listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, if you would, uh, during this Thanksgiving season, we know that we have so much to give God thanks for. We have so many things to praise uh, God for. Uh, but if you would, brothers and sisters, go with me to uh, the hymnal of the Bible uh, that is in uh, Psalms. Uh, let's go to Psalm 30. Let's go to Psalm 30 and let's go to the thanksgiving uh, and the worshipful uh, hymn of the Bible, right? So we want to go to Psalm 30. Psalm 30, and we want to read 1 through 4. Psalm 30, and we're going to read um, increments 1 through 4. And it reads thusly. I'm reading the New International Version. Yours may be just slightly different but this is what I'm reading. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let mine enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead you spared me from going down to hell. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Give thanksgiving to his holy name. Brothers and sisters, we just want to pause for a moment or better. Um, and for the time that we share, uh, I want to use as a framework for this particular pericope a few reasons to give thanks. A few reasons to give thanks. Pleasant parishioners, partners of PG, of course we know that Thanksgiving this year falls on Thursday, November the 26th. And every year, most of us look forward to a great <laughs> mouth-watering, lip-smacking, finger-licking Thanksgiving Day feast. In many homes, it is an annual tradition to pull out our favorite recipe and to taunt, tease, and tempt dieters with delicious desserts. Those desserts may be, I don't know what yours is, perhaps you like a chocolate cake, perhaps you like a potato pie, peach cobbler, banana pudding, and after the day is gone, we have perhaps gained a few extra pounds and we rush off to participate in the Black Friday frenzy. My brothers and sisters, many of us have gone through these motions uh, without giving much consideration to what Thanksgiving is really about. So brothers and sisters, I challenge you today uh, to think about what Thanksgiving is really about. History tells us one thing, and one of the things that history tells us that is in 1621, the indigenous people of this land celebrated with uh, brothers and sisters uh, 
uh, those who came to this land uh, to give thanks unto God uh, for keeping them throughout the harsh winters and bitter blizzard storms, keeping food available and in stock. And history also tells us that Thanksgiving lasted for three days because people had so much to be thankful about. In other words, brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that there is a lot for us to give God praise and thank God about because God has been so good to us. But brothers and sisters, as we come uh, to this phase in human history, it now becomes more about the economy than about the person. It is more about Black Friday. It is more about merchants who are infringing more upon the sacredness of family, forcing people to work on Thanksgiving to satisfy the insatiable appetite of greed. I just feel compelled to tell someone today uh, to be thankful for the time that you share or that you have with your family. Be thankful for the time that you share or that you have with your family. And if you have not done your best to give thanks unto God right now because uh, brothers and sisters, one of the things that I want to share with you is that you ought to give God thanks right now if you have not done it before. You ought to give God thanks. You ought to give God thanks because you have not had the opportunity to do it before. And if you've not given God your best, you ought to give it to him right now because he's given you an opportunity to praise him and to grow and to change. As we look at the historical account of humanity, we see the Native Americans, they valued uh, a family structure. The indigenous people of this land, they valued the family structure Therefore, they set aside a few days to thank God along with their immigrant neighbors for all that God had done for them, to them, and through them. That brings me to the Thanksgiving table of our text for today because when uh, while uh, this act between indigenous, indigenous natives and immigrant newcomers gave way to th the Thanksgiving holiday, what I want you to understand is that Thanksgiving has always been something that grateful people do or appreciative people of God. We always give thanks and we've done that from the beginning of time. I'm glad that you're walking with me because about 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, there was a songwriter by the name of David. David, like many of us, had a lot to be thankful for. David had gone through some things in life and he had a whole lot to be thankful for. And I think that there is someone who is watching today that knows that there is something that you have to be thankful about. I, like David, again, I have something to be thankful about. I, like David, uh, I recognize that God has done something for me. I recognize that God has used me. I recognize that God has provided and given provisions. God has protected in such a way that I just think it is in order for us to give God praise. To give God praise. To give God praise. David, brothers and sisters, as he went through his life, 
He understood, uh, he identifies the many reasons that he should give thanks unto a gracious God. Many of us have much to be thankful for, but, uh, but sometimes, brothers and sisters, pleasant parishioners, what we do and partners of PG and all of our friends, sometimes we allow our circumstances, we allow the situations we find ourselves in life to smother, to stifle, to suffocate our gratitude. Many times we get to a particular place where we don't want to give God thanks and praise because of what we are going through. Brothers and sisters, gratitude is showing simple appreciation for what God has done for you and I. And I think that as mature believers, we ought to be at a place and a point in our Christian uh, maturation to where we can give God thanks for the things that God has done for us that we could in no way do for ourselves. Gratitude is showing appreciation for what God has done for you and I. And since we cannot give God uh, anything that God does not already have, I think the least that we can do is express an attitude of gratitude by opening up our mouths and lifting up our voices and telling the Lord thank you and acknowledging the fact that God has done something in our lives that we could in no other way do for ourselves. I think that in this Advent season, all of us virtually or together can lift up the name of God and say thank you because God, you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. Gratitude is showing appreciation for what God has done for you and I. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, and again, uh, since we can't give God anything, since we can't uh, give God anything that he does not already have, uh, at least we could just lift up our voices and tell the Lord thank you. And you may not know this, but God adores our appreciation. I want to say that one more time. There's someone who is looking at me while I'm looking at you. I want you to understand this, that God adores our appreciation. God loves when you say thank you. He loves our gratitude. He honors our grateful hearts because one thing that a grateful heart does, it reminds us that ultimately God is our provider. It is nothing that you have done in and of yourself, but it is because God blessed you is the reason why you are at the place you are at right now. We've got to understand that all blessings and all gifts are graciously given by the hand of God. God is gratified by our gratitude. I want to say it one more time, brothers and sisters. God is gratified by our gratitude. You ought to touch your neighbor. No, it's COVID season, I, I remember. But, but you ought to tell somebody or text somebody or post on your timeline and say that God is gratified by our gratitude. God is gratified by our gratitude. So always keep an attitude of gratitude. Always be thankful for what God has done 
for you and I. Many times, brothers and sisters, I can be out um, and I can see someone who needs a little bit of help. Uh, and because mom raised me to be a gentleman, uh, sometimes I just, uh, it, it, it's just in me that I open the door for somebody else. And many times uh, when I do that, I'm opening the door for uh, a woman. Uh, brothers and sisters, please don't call me uh, a misogynist uh, because I'm not that, but I have just been raised in a certain way where I, I want to just open the door for someone who is coming behind me uh, and initially a woman. But brothers and sisters, uh, what I've also noticed that in this time or uh, in this space that we share together, that we find people who are not always as, uh, uh, they, they don't have a sense of graciousness and they don't uh, accept what you do for them so much because there are some people that you can open the door for and they will just walk through the door like you are supposed to open the door for them. Y'all, this is just my pet peeve. What I'm saying is that uh, it, it is important for people and it is important also for God for somebody to say thank you. It's important for us to say thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters, as I've opened the door so many times uh, for people, sometimes they say thank you, sometimes they don't. Uh, but it, it makes me feel good when someone acknowledges that I did something for, for them that they didn't do for themselves. All I'm trying to share with you up through this coronavirus time is that brothers and sisters, that God has been opening doors for us that we couldn't open for ourselves for a long time. And all God is doing is warning you to say thank you for the door that you couldn't open on your own. I'm about to shout in here by myself. All God is wanting you to do is just open up your mouth and say thank you for what the friends that you didn't have before, for the benefits that you didn't have. God has done some things in your life. He's caused some provisions and God has caused some protections. He's done some things in your life that you couldn't do on your own. And all God wants you to do is say, thank you thank you thank you brothers and sisters when we don't say thank you for the things that people do what that suggests to me is that we have illogical thinking we have illogical thinking when we don't tell God thank you and we don't tell people thank you for the good things that they have done, we have illogical thinking. David was good at thanking God. We see Psalm 134, he also thanks God. David does not miss thanking God. And I, I want to uh, suggest that for us as pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, don't ever miss thanking God for what God has done. In Psalm 134 and 2, David thanks God. He says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. In other words, he wants those who understand what God has done to bless God for what God has done. David had experienced God's tenderness. God, David had experienced God's goodness. David had experienced God's mercy. David had experienced God's grace in such a way that his experience moved him to a place of expression. I want to say that again. His experience moved him to a place of expression. And I want you to get to that place, pleasant parishioners, that when we experience what God has done, we can express 
what God has done. I'm about to shout by myself. Brothers and sisters, I want you to get to that place that when we experience the goodness of God, we can express it. I don't know about you, but when I reflect on my experience, I can't help but to move ecstatically with expression. Uh, I, I'm uh, bringing Brother David with me, brothers and sisters, to Thanksgiving this year. Uh, and I'm bringing Brother David with me. I'm bringing David with me, and we're going to shout for three days as we eat the food and as we eat the leftovers. We are going to shout because God has done something for us. Let's look at verse number one. David says that God has lifted me up and not allowed my foes to rejoice over me. David thanked God, first of all, for protection. He thanked God for protection. David had some enemies who wanted to see him dead. He had some enemies uh, that wanted to see him dead. At this point uh, in uh, the biblical narrative, King Saul had become an enemy of David. You see, here is one of those folks who don't know how to say thank you, right? If you look at the text, David did a whole lot of stuff for King Saul, but King Saul was thinking illogically. He didn't think in the right way, and instead of thanking David, he got jealous of the good things that David was doing. Don't ever be a person that gets jealous of ministry. Brothers and sisters, what King Saul was doing, King Saul had thought illogically after David had slain Goliath, the one who had threatened all of Israel a job that the king should have done. Uh, he should have been the one who slayed Goliath. But King Saul did not show his gratitude to David, but instead he got jealous of him and wanted to kill him. Brothers and sisters, we never want to get to a place and a position in our Christian walk to where we see things are going well and we want to stop them and become jealous. That just goes to show, my brothers and sisters, that when you do what is right in God's sight, you will unavoidably, imminently, and inevitably create some enemy. You always have enemies when you're trying to do what is right in the sight of God. Verse number two, David also gives that the Lord, um, the Lord, uh, he gives the Lord thanks for healing him. So the Lord gave him um, um, protection and the Lord gave him protection uh, even in this piece, but the Lord also gives him provision. And he gave him uh, provision in the way of healing. And I want to share uh, with you that if you're, you've ever been sick a day in your life, God was gracious enough to allow you to see yet another reason to be thankful. All of us have a reason to be thankful because we've seen another sunshiny day. Because bad health puts us in physical danger. If we look, if we look at verse 2, verse 2 goes well with verse 3, as David says that God delivered him from the grave. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but those are some things that we can be thankful about 
that when uh, we could have been dead, that's what the seasoned saints would say, that when we could have been dead, we should have been dead, God allowed us to live and experience life afresh. Brothers and sisters, verse 2 again goes along and well with verse 3. David says that God delivered him from the grave. Again, there's someone here today who knows how it feels to be close to the grave. There's someone who is listening with us today who knows how it feels to have one foot in the hole and the other foot on a banana peel. Brothers and sisters, there is someone who knows how it feels to be close to death. But it just seems like through all of the tragedies that we have experienced this year, all of the things that have been broadcast on the news, throughout all of the attacks that we've seen, all of the gang violence, all of the domestic abuse, all of the road rage, all of the disgruntled employees, all of the deaths in the COVID-19, all of those things that we have experienced, brothers and sisters, uh, we are still here. God still blesses us because he has inclined his ear unto us. He says, I will incline my ear unto you, and God gives us blessings. And because God has inclined his ear unto us, God has allowed us to be able to live long. Brothers and sisters, don't forget to call the Lord and invite him to your Thanksgiving feast. While we have, uh, I don't know what you're eating this Thanksgiving. I don't know if you're doing turkey necks or the whole turkey. I don't know if you're doing chitlins or steak. But whatever you do, brothers and sisters, this year, you ought to allow God and invite God to your Thanksgiving feast. The last thing that excites me is verse number four. Verse number four excites me because he says, sing praises unto God. Sing praises unto God, you faithful people. In other words, what brothers and sisters, what he's saying is that we need to be able to sing praises unto God as we are faithful to him because he is faithful to us. David invites others to participate in thanksgiving, and he recognizes that God's anger is sent in love. And for um, when we mess up, and brothers and sisters, one of the things that I share with you is that God's anger is for our chastening, is for our correction, chastening from God, but it only lasts a moment, and it is soon replaced by the favor of God. Just like weeping, brothers and sisters, what the word of God shares with us is that weeping endures only for a night. But one of the things that we can shout about is that joy comes in the morning. I don't know about you, but brothers and sisters, I've got a few reasons to give God thanks. I got reasons to give God thanks. God has protected me. God has given 
provisions unto me, and God has given me power. For that I tell the Lord, thank you, because God has kept me when I wasn't able to keep myself. And for that, I tell the Lord, thank you. The door of the church is open. The door of our Father's house is open. If you want to become a part of this church, you can do so in a couple of different ways. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you can reach out to a pleasant parishioner. Uh, if you know a pleasant parishioner, brothers and sisters, you can reach out to a pleasant parishioner. Uh, if you don't know a pleasant parishioner, if you're just on our virtual website or if you on our streaming opportunity, brothers and sisters, you can also send a um, an email uh, to ghpruitt at gmail.com ghpruitt at gmail.com and also brothers and sisters you can also call our office you can call our office and you can leave a message once you call 314-535-7548 314-535-7548 five three five seven five four eight and you can leave a message uh, and once you leave a message brothers and sisters whether you respond to us um, through our gmail or through our office messaging system we will respond to you within 48 hours we will respond to you within 48 hours brothers and sisters i pray that this has been uh, an inspiring and evoking opportunity, preaching opportunity for you. Uh, we pray that something has been said that will enrich your lives and will enrich your daily living. Brothers and sisters, if you want to be generous to our ministry, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can send a, a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, and you can send that to 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, 63113 St. Louis, Missouri. You can send a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church at REV. G.H. Pruitt at Pleasant Green Missionary at St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. That is Pleasant Green uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Also, brothers and sisters, again, we are just thankful for your presence. We thank you for you logging in and we thank you for thinking about Pleasant Green. With that being said, brothers and sisters, we want to just give you a benediction and we pray that you stay safe and you stay home and you stay out of the way of the coronavirus. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power and we thank you for your permission. And God, we thank you uh, for your provision. God, we ask now that during this time of pandemic and during this time of uh, unsurety, God, we give that you give your pleasant parishioners certainty. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. May we all say virtually and together, amen. It's time to worship through giving. Give online at pgmbcstl.org or mail in your tithes and offering at the address below. Hopefully the word was relevant and relatable. If you'd like to connect to Christ through our church, shoot us an email at ghpruitt at gmail.com. We are always excited to reaffirm our relationship with you. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.